Let's check out a visual proof of a classic factorial sum and how it produces the factorial number system. Start with a single square representing the number 1 times 1 factorial. Below that, place a 2 by 2 grid of squares representing the number 2 times 2 factorial. Below that, place a grid of 3 by 6 or 3 by 3 factorial squares representing the number 3 times 3 factorial, and continue the process of stacking i by i factorial grids of squares, stopping here at n by n factorial, representing the number n times n factorial. So a diagram like this represents the sum 1 times 1 factorial, plus 2 times 2 factorial, and so on up to n times n factorial. Here we've only pictured up to n equals 4 because the grids get really wide after that. Now here's an inductive way to rearrange the squares. Notice that the top square sits inside a 1 factorial by 2 rectangle. So it represents the number 2 times 1 factorial minus 1, which is 2 factorial minus 1. But then that means that this set of squares here sits inside a 3 by 2 factorial rectangle. And since it's missing one square, the number here is 3 times 2 factorial minus 1, which is 3 factorial minus 1. But that means that those squares can be shifted down to sit directly on top of the 3 by 3 factorial grid. Now we see that this new grid is a 4 by 3 factorial rectangle, except there's still one square missing inside. So this rectangle contains 4 times 3 factorial minus 1, or 4 factorial minus 1 squares. We can shift those down onto the next array. We can repeat this process over and over again, eventually ending with an n by n minus 1 factorial sized rectangle, missing one square inside. But that means that we have n times n minus 1 factorial minus 1 squares, or n factorial minus 1 squares. We can use these to stack down on top of the final array, which is n by n factorial. But that means that this final rectangle is an n plus 1 by n factorial rectangle, and we're missing one square. So that means the total number of squares is n plus 1 times n factorial minus 1, which simplifies to n plus 1 factorial minus 1. Since we haven't removed any squares in the process, we see that the finite sum where i ranges from 1 to n of i times i factorial must be the same as n plus 1 factorial minus 1. As three examples, we see that if you add 1 to 1 times 1 factorial, you get 2 factorial. If you add 1 to 1 times 1 factorial plus 2 times 2 factorial, you get 3 factorial. And if you add 1 to 1 times 1 factorial plus 2 times 2 factorial plus 3 times 3 factorial, you get 4 factorial. While this is an interesting finite sum formula in its own right, we can actually use the formula to produce an interesting number system. It's a theorem that every natural number n can be written uniquely as n equals n1 times 1 factorial, plus n2 times 2 factorial, and so on, up to nk times k factorial, where we require that each ni lives between 0 and i inclusive for each i from 1 up to k. This mixed radix numeral system is called the factorial number system. Let's see how the formula produces these representations. First, we see that 1 equals 1 times 1 factorial. When we add 1 to that, we use our formula to see that 2 equals 0 times 1 factorial plus 1 times 2 factorial. Then we can add another 1 to get 3 equals 1 times 1 factorial plus 1 times 2 factorial. And again, we use our formula to see that 4 equals 0 times 1 factorial plus 2 times 2 factorial. That is, when we added 1 to the 1 times 1 factorial, we ended up with another 2 factorial. We add another 1 factorial to see that 5 equals 1 times 1 factorial plus 2 times 2 factorial. And now we get to apply our formula again. When we go to add 1 to 5, which is 1 times 1 factorial plus 2 times 2 factorial, we are totally full and we have to add another factorial. So we get that 6 equals 0 times 1 factorial plus 0 times 2 factorial plus 1 times 3 factorial. Our formula tells us exactly when to add another digit to these factorial base representations. We can keep counting up by adding 1 each time. We apply our formula when we have 1 times 1 factorial plus 2 times 2 factorial and so on up to n times n factorial, in which case we add 1 to the next digit and zero out all the first n digits. So in this situation, we see that when we eventually add up to 23, we have the number 1 times 1 factorial plus 2 times 2 factorial plus 3 times 3 factorial. We apply our sum formula and we see that 24 is going to be 0 times 1 factorial, plus 0 times 2 factorial, plus 0 times 3 factorial, plus 1 times 4 factorial. So 24 is the first 4-digit number in the factorial number system. Can you guess what the first 5-digit number will be in this number system? This is a positional number system, so we can simply list off the digits, and we often do that from most significant to least significant in a list form. 
We know what the digit represents because we simply multiply it by the factorial for the corresponding position. Can you keep going and count up to 77 this way? Even better, can you find the factorial number system representation for the number 77 without counting up to 77? What's your strategy to find the digits? Here's a fun exercise. Can you figure out what the representation for the number E would be in the factorial number system?